Hello, welcome back to Infinite Jeff. I'm Jeff. This is Infinite Jeff. I'm reading to you Infinite Jest. It's a book. David Foster Wallace. One page at a time. One day at a time. I'm, we're doing it. We're on a page 43. If I was some kind of Douglas Adams nerd, I might give a shit. But I'm not. So we're on page 43 of Infinite Jest. Hal Incondenza's brother, Oren, wakes up alone at 0730, 730 hours, amid a damp scent of ambush, and on the other side's Denton pillow, a note with phone number and vital data in a loopy, schoolgirlish hand. There's also ambush on the note. His side of the bed is soaked. Oren makes honey toast, standing barefoot at the kitchen counter, wearing briefs and an old Academy sweatshirt with the arms cut off squeezing honey from the head of a plastic bear. The floor is so cold it hurts his feet, but the double-pane window over the sink is hot to the touch. The beastly Metro Phoenix October AM heat just outside. Home with the team, no matter how high the AC or how thin the sheet, Oren wakes with his own impressions sweated darkly into the bed beneath him, slowly drying all day to a salt, white salty outline just slightly off from the week's other faint dried outlines so his fetal-shaped, fossilized image is fanned out across his side of the bed like a deck of cards, just overlapping, like an acid trail or timed exposure. The heat just past the glass doors tightens his scalp. He takes breakfast out to a white iron table by the condo complex's central pool and tries to eat there in the heat, the coffee not steaming or cooling. He sits there in dumb animal pain, he has a mustache of sweat. A bright beach ball floats and bumps against one side of the pool. The sun like a sneaky keyhole view of hell. No one else out here. The complex is a ring with the pool and deck and jacuzzi in the center. Heat shimmers off the deck like fumes from fuel. That's the mirage thing where the extreme heat makes the dry deck look like wet with fuel. Orin can hear cartridge viewers going from behind closed windows that aerobic show every morning, and also someone playing an organ, and the older woman who won't even smile back at him in the apartment next to his doing operatic scales, muffled by drapes and sun curtains and double panes. The jacuzzi chugs and foams. The note from last night's subject is on violet bond once folded and with a circle of darker violet dead center where the subject's perfume spritzer had hit it. The only interesting thing about the script, but also depressing, in that every single circle, O's, D's, P's, the numbers 6 and 8, is darkened in, where the eyes are dotted not with circles, but with tiny little Valentine's hearts, which are not darkened in. Oren reads the note while he eats toasts that's mainly an excuse for the honey. He uses his smaller right arm to eat and drink. His oversized left arm and big leg remain at rest at all times in the morning. A breeze sends the beach ball skating all the way across the blue pool to the other side, and Oren watches its noiseless glide. The white iron tables have no umbrellas, and you can tell where the sun is without looking. You can feel right where it is on your body and project from there. The ball moves tentatively back out towards the middle of the pool, and then stays there, not even bobbing. The same small breezes make the rotted palms along the condominium complex's stone walls rustle and click, and a couple... And that's, that's where we got to leave off. That's page 43 of Infinite Jest. We've got this uh, misshapen Oren Cadenza in Cadenza with the, the asymmetrical <laughs> arms and legs, I guess. I'm guessing that's Mario. Yeah, from the previous chapter. But we'll see. Good night.